Donald Trump got booked in Georgia today. You know this. This has been the news story. You're not surprised by this. You knew this was coming. And my thoughts on it are simply this. And I know this is heavy, but it's true. This because it's a hard truth doesn't mean it's any less true. Where are our indictments? Donald Trump was impeached twice for nothing and now indicted four times. So far, Republicans, no impeachments, no indictments. Not one Republican DA across the country has indicted a prominent Democrat. The GOP House, remember we gave them control of the House, not one indictment of Joe Biden, Merrick Garland, Mayorkas, pick your guy, not one. And so let me lay this out for you. I understand this is a day where people are mad and angry and, and you're hearing a lot of things like, ah, oh, we have to unify behind Trump and all that, and all that stuff's fine. It, it sounds great on the campaign trail. None of that stuff means anything. Unless we get indictments and impeachments, unless we start fighting back the way they are, Donald Trump will never be president of the United States of America. Again, because the system won't allow it. They're going to throw him in prison, make him cop a plea, he's going to back out. The system's not going to allow him back in the White House unless we actually start fighting back. And right now, I don't know if you've seen something, I've seen no indication that we intend to do so. It is amazing to me watching the GOP just watch all this happen and just lay down for it. They're just laying down for it, just accepting it. No fight, no nothing. You know what needs to be done. I know what needs to be done. And they don't want to do it. Yes, it is what it is. Joining me now, Darren Beatty, Revolver News journalist. He might be the best journalist in the country right now with the stories he brings us on this show, stories he brings you on Revolver all the time. Highly recommend you go follow him. Okay, Darren, Trump has a mugshot. Trump's turned in. Trump's indicted. Trump's arrested. Fanny Willis wants to try him like 15 minutes from now. I think it's October 23rd. She said, how do we game all this out? I, 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 I don't... I don't see a good solution. It all looks horrible to me, but the floor is yours. Well, it is a terrible development, and it's a great embarrassment for our country, frankly. Uh, Trump himself has only uh, things to be proud of. In fact, I think we've reached such a point of degradation and corruption in our country that in the future, politicians should be saying, where's your indictment? What do you plan on the debate stage they should be asked what good things do you want to do for the american people how are you going to earn your indictment so to speak and trump definitely earned it and you know he's public enemy number one from the standpoint of the regime it is unfortunate and embarrassing as i said that we're in this banana boat territory where a corrupt and senescent two-bit kind of boston style uh mafia a um, guy like Biden would be in a position to weaponize his Justice Department in order to go after his most viable and likely political rival in 2024. But if that's the game, that's the game. And I've been saying the Republicans need a general response to this. If we don't have any answer to the lawfare from the left, we're done. We need a robust tit-for-tat system, and we need to operationalize all Republican a, uh, DAs across the country to say, okay, you indict us, we indict you if that's how you want to play it. That should be close to a number one priority for in terms of allocation of resources on the Republican side. Darren, I agree with you. I've been screaming it from the rooftops. People can shout and scream, this is wrong, this is unjust. But as I've been saying, until you start indicting Democrats, nothing's going to change. They have no fear right now at all. They continue to do this with no response, no impeachments, no indictments. And Darren, unless I'm mistaken, I don't see any on the horizon. Is someone even acting like they plan on it? So if there is no response, and right now it looks like there won't be, where does that leave us? Well, it kind of leaves us where we've been for a while, which is that the GOP institutionally and really kind of conservatives culturally are not set up to play a real high stakes game in America and win it. And the fact that Trump kind of stood outside of that and actually did kind of play that high stakes game is precisely why the system is going after him in such an unprecedented 
fashion, you know, to get a nightmare vision of what politics will look like after Trump. And, you know, even if Trump wins, there will be a time after Trump. It's back to the boring, bland, stale, utterly uninspiring version of the GOP that we had for decades prior to Trump. And I think it, you know, that more than anything, the debate last night, more than anything, should underscore and help us understand why the regime is so desperate to get rid of Trump. He changed politics and they want to put that toothpaste back in the bottle. And if it requires nakedly weaponizing and nakedly destroying the last drop of legitimacy in our institutions to take him off the table, they are fully prepared to do that. And so ideally we would be fighting back accordingly, but it's it's tough to get the Republicans to do anything at this point. I don't know that I agree with one part of that in that we just go back to normal. I think the people will be so disgusted by all this that they will demand something else. I, I, I could see the people completely, utterly rejecting the GOP going forward if we get no response. Or am I just hopeful? Is that just wishful thinking, Darren? You know, there's such an appetite for wishful thinking that I feel bad to, you know, push back against that. Um, we'll see. You know, I, I like to be a you know cautious optimist, actually. So we'll have to see. But an interesting test case that, you know, there's so many institutional advantages. Our, a first step would be, can conservatives sort of step off the Fox News plantation? You know, that's one test before getting rid of getting rid of the GOP entirely institutionally kind of free up some space so we're not utterly dependent on Fox News. That would be an initial test. So far, I think the jury is still out, but the Tucker-Trump interview, I think, was um, an encouraging step in a more interesting direction in terms of our media and ultimate independence from the GOP establishment. Darren, thank you so much, my brother. Come back soon. Thank you. Always great to be with you. I have great news. If you enjoyed that, I have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. Whatever I do, it'll be right there on YouTube. So go subscribe today.